Good morning. Thank you for joining me for my di daily Come Follow Me study of the Book of Mormon. Today is Wednesday the 30th, and we're going to start with prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this day. We are grateful for this morning that we have to come before Thee in, in word and in heart. We ask that thou please bless us with thy spirit as we do that as we share and discuss this talk by Elder Suarez that we can find the things that apply to us, the things that we've been searching for and apply them to our lives. We're grateful for thy love, for thy messengers and the spirit that that dwells on this earth. We ask that it may prevail during this election, that honesty can be in place. We love thee, Father, so very much. And we say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. Today is daily reflection. <sighs> I don't know if I'm going to get used, used to that. All right. October 30th. I give unto you to be a light of this people. Therefore, let your light so shine before this people that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. 3 Nephi chapter 12, verses 14 and 16. President Gordon B. Hinckley has taught, Believe in the nature within you, the divine nature, that you are in, in very deed a son or daughter of the living God. Get above the dirt and the filth of the earth and walk on a higher plane with your heads up, Believing in yourselves and in your capacity to act for good in the world and make a difference. Hi, honey. Did you just wake up? Yeah. Did you have good dreams? Yeah. Yeah. Did I go dad with? No, I got to use it for my video today. Are you done? No, babe. Either go back upstairs or lay down in my bed, okay? Okay. Okay. We who have entered a covenant relationship with Christ have both a sacred obligation and blessed opportunity to glorify our Father in heaven and his Son in thought, word, and deed. The light of love and truth will radiate from all who sincerely strive to overcome the world and follow the Master. As Isaiah reminded us, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. The radiance of gospel truth and righteousness and righteous living can never be dimmed. Gordon did have a way, didn't he? He was so cute. But the part where he says, get above the dirt and the filth of the earth and walk on a higher plane with your heads up. Like, right? Right? Like, rise above it. Rise above it, which is good for this upcoming week. We'll see how, we'll see if anybody can rise above it. I think we know who can. Okay, so today is Wednesday, the 30th, and it's the UPIC General Conference Talk. And I asked um, you guys to suggest which one we do together. And I only saw Naomi mention one, which is Aligning Our Will with His by Elder Suarez from this last general conference. So that's the one I did. Um, and I don't really remember his talk except for the part where he says, um, I do my own truth. I do what works for me. I was like, oh yeah, I remember this now. But he begins by starting his talk about a pearl of great price. Um, this man finds one in a field, but the only way to get the pearl is to sell all he has to buy this field so that he can have the pearl. Um, uh, and the pearl is a parable that the Savior taught. Um, a precious treasure that should be desired over all else is the kingdom of God. And he says, to be worthy of this great reward, 
we certainly need, among other things, to give our best effort to set aside all self-centered pursuits and abandon any entanglement that holds us back from full commitment to the Lord and his higher and holier ways. The Apostle Paul refers to these sanctifying pursuits as having the mind of Christ. As exemplified by Jesus Christ, this meaning doing this means doing always those things that please the Lord in our lives, or as some people say nowadays, this is doing what works for the Lord. So the rising above goes along with Gordon, the higher and holier ways, and having the mind of Christ. So he doesn't really he he talks about the the mind like how to do it like in essence like that sort of thing but i think in relation to our theme for the month prayerful having the mind of christ is something that really comes through being prayerful and and searching asking the lord what his will is um he goes on to say that during our sojourn in mortality, we often wrestle with what we think we know, what we think is best, and what we assume works for us. Hello, we're mortal, yes. Here's what I think. Here's what I think is best. Uh, as opposed to comprehending what Heavenly Father actually knows, what is eternally best, and what absolutely works for children within his plan. This great wrestle can become very complex, especially considering the prophecies contained in the scripture for our day. This know also, in the last days, men shall be lovers of their own selves, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. One sign that indicates fulfillment of this prophecy is the current growing trend in the world adopted by so many of people becoming consumed with themselves and constantly proclaiming no matter what I live my own truth or I do what works for me as Paul the Apostle said they seek their own not the things which are Jesus Christ this way of thinking is often justified as being authentic by those who indulge in self-centered pursuits focus on personal preferences or want to justify certain types of behavior that frequently don't match God's loving plan and his will for them. If we let our heart and mind embrace this way of thinking, we can create significant stumbling blocks for ourselves in acquiring the most priceless pearl that God has lovingly prepared for his children eternal life. Boom. All right. Mic drop there with Elder Suarez. Um, this reminds me of a person who I went on a date with many years ago, two, three years ago, I don't know, two years. Um, and uh, we met online and then we met up for dinner and he was a former member of the church, served a mission, and then when he came home, he just started getting into anti-Mormon literature and all that rhetoric. And he left the church and on the date all he did the whole time didn't ask me one question about myself all he did was try to tear down the church and the reason I bring this up is because recently I ran into him and I'm just like dude you don't look so great <laughs> like clearly he chose some behaviors that didn't align with the Lord's will and so he sought to justify what he was doing and you can see that in his countenance and I'm like so glad I didn't I walked out on that date look just I was like sorry gotta go can't stay here anymore um but yeah did I bring that up yeah he wanted to justify his his sins or the way that he felt his selfishness his self-centeredness and the habits or sins that he had cultivated that he felt guilty about he wanted to justify those uh, my dear friends, when we choose to let God be the most powerful influence in our in our life over our self-preserving, self-serving pursuits, we can make progress in our discipleship and increase our capacity to unite our mind and heart with the Savior. On the other hand, when we don't allow God's way to prevail in our life, we are left to ourselves, and without the Lord's inspiring guidance, we can justify almost anything we do or don't do. 
we can also make excuses for ourselves by doing things our own way, saying, in effect, I am just doing things my way. When solidifies that guy for me. He's left to his own self and his looks, I don't know if he got into drugs or something, but like his deteriorated significantly. He looks sickly. He don't look happy, that's for sure. All right. As Christ's disciples, we desire to walk the path he marked for us during his mortal ministry. We not only desire to do his will and all that will please him, but also seek to emulate him. As we strive to be true to every covenant we have entered into and live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, we will be protected against falling victim to the sins and errors of the world errors of philosophy and doctrine that would lead us away from the most precious pearls. Uh, one of the most glorious moments of mortality occurs when we discover the joy that comes when doing always those things that work for and please the Lord and what works for us, becoming one and the same. To decisively and unquestionably make the Lord's will our own requires majestic and heroic discipleship. At that sublime moment, we become consecrated to the Lord and we totally yield our will to Him. Such spiritual submissive, submissiveness, so to speak, is beautiful, powerful, and transform, transformational. And then he ends the talk. Um, but I think a, a big part of this is to pray to know the Lord's will. Pray to have our hearts changed. That that could be our will as well. And I think prayer is a big part of that. Father, please make what works for thee work for me. Please help me to understand thy will and to accept it. Um, all right, so that was Aligning Our Will with His, Ulysses Suarez, from this last general conference. Prayer. Our daily reading on prayer. I was like, what comes next? It's a day 304. Very Few Pray Too Much by Bernard P. Brockbank. All right. Jesus Christ counsels men to have family prayer. He says, pray in your families unto the Father, always in my name, that your wives and your children may be blessed. Very few pray too much. It is not one of our weaknesses. <laughs> Parents have the sacred responsibility to teach their children the importance and value of prayer and the responsibility to teach their children how to pray. In many homes, even some of the best prayers are ignored and neglected. Prayer is sacred, and Jesus said, trifle not with sacred things. Another blessing available through prayer is feeling the love of God in your heart and soul. We have in the scriptures this sacred promise. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, pray unto the fathers with all the energy of heart, that ye may be filled with this love, which he hath bestowed upon all who are true follow followers of his Son, Jesus Christ, that ye may become the sons of God, that when he shall appear, ye shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is, that we may have this hope, that we may be purified even as he is pure. As the sons and daughters of a living God, a living heavenly Father, we should stay close to him by humble prayer. We should stay close to him with a clear life, that our hearts may find peace in all of life's sacred opportunities and blessings. That's a good one. I like that one. We can never pray too much. All right. Um, read it, do it. Yeah. Read it, do it. October 30th. Mormon chapter 2, verses 14 through 29. They highlight verse 23. Mormon urges his people with great urgency energy to stand boldly to fight for their wives, their children, and their homes. Stand boldly. All right. 
that was UPIC General Conference Talk, aligning our will with his, Ulysses Suarez, from this last general conference. And tomorrow, last day of October, we do Mormon Chapter 3. All right, let's end it with a prayer. Oh, wait, first, I wanted to tell you, I finished the Lord of the Rings Virtual Walking Challenge. I finished... Uh, yesterday, last night, the steps from yesterday, I finished. And in total from the Shire to Mordor, 660 miles. I can't wait to get my medal. I'm so excited. All the other challenges in between there is just like icing on the cake and motivational to get me through those 660 miles. But I finished. I'm done now. So I'm really excited about that. And I'm wondering what to do now. Do I keep going? Because right now I have completed 20 challenges. Or five fully, wholeheartedly. But 20 challenges. And I got two medals in the mail yesterday. Dublin and the English Channel. Uh, I told you at the end of the year I'd do you a, a tour of my medals. And once I get my last Lord of the Rings medal, which, which should be in about nine days. I will show you. I'm so excited. All right. Now let's end it with a prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this day. We are grateful for our health and our strength and our ability to have a new day to be better disciples of Thee. We're grateful for Thy love and support and kindness. We're thankful for our safety. And we ask you to please be with those who are searching for thee. Guide them and lead them to thee, to thy missionaries, to thy love, and to thy mercy. We're grateful for all that we have, Father, for our many blessings that we don't even recognize each day. We're grateful for family, for loved ones, and for this world. We ask you to please bless this country that that peace and honesty may reign, that thy spirit may prevail. We love thee, Father, so very much. And we say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. We will see you tomorrow. Bye.